Welcome to EVA. This is our first video about the foundations of Western style Viking fighting. We'll introduce you to everything you need to know about fighting in the Western style. So put on your war face and let's get ready to learn how to become a Viking fighter. This is not role playing. This is not a show. What we do here is a sport called Viking fighting. As in any other martial arts, we try to win. This is done by hitting our opponent. However, we only need to touch the opponent to win. So we take care not to hurt each other. You don't need to be a giant and have a big red beard to be part of EVA. Everyone can join. And we're proud to say that we have a great diversity among our members. Young and old, male and female, tall and short. At our weekly training, we put on normal training clothes, like any other sport. What might differ is, of course, the weapons, the shield and safety equipment. As in all martial arts, safety is key. Let us look at our safety equipment, the leather gloves and the arm guards. These are not exactly offensive Viking gear, but are a modern safety precaution. So we live to fight yet another week. The arm guards are made from leather to protect the arms from the steel weapons. You can add elbow protection too. Then we have the leather gloves. The shield hand glove is optional in our group, but the two-handed weapons always wear gloves on both hands. The arm guards and the gloves are required safety equipment and members may not fight without them. They're easy to make yourself and there are a bunch of great patterns for them online. Let us have a look at the weapons we use. These are all weapons found in archaeological digs from the Viking Age. For obvious reasons, all of our weapons are blunt and we check them for dense and sharp edges on a regular basis. First off, we have the Viking Shield. In EVA, we make our own shields from wood, leather and linen, and of course the Shield Boss. It's quite easy to make if you know how. Every fighting group have their own shield crest, so talk with your Viking fighting group before painting it as copying designs is a big no-go. The shield is used to protect you from getting hit or even protect one of your teammates. The shield can also be used actively to trap an opponent. The axe comes in many different styles, lengths and weights, and some are even decorated. Even though it's blunt, don't let it fool you, it is still a weapon, so it's quite important that you know how to use it safely. It is a great weapon in one versus one battles, and it is an important weapon during line fights, as it is great at hooking enemy spears and keeping them down. Let us have a look at the sword. There are different types. The classic Viking sword, the long sax, the scram sax, and some even use sabers from the Viking Age. The sword have agility and lightness, making it great at getting behind the opponent's shield. Most fighters have a sax or two in their belt as a secondary weapon. When on the line, it can become quite handy if you are disarmed. Then we have the one-handed spear. The benefit of the one-handed spear is that you still have protection from the shield with the range of a spear. Due to this, the one-handed spear is a great weapon during line fighting. Moving on, we have the two-handed spear. As the name says, you'll need both hands to manage this weapon. Though it's not effective during one versus one fights. It is a most effective weapon in line fights. The fighter can take shelter behind his teammates and still be able to strike the opponents with great reach. Last but not least, we have the Danax, or the Dux as we like to call it. In line fighting, this weapon is the one to watch out for. It is fast and can hit you when you least expect it. The Danax can pull away a shield or disarm an opponent, and it can strike from a great range. Watch out for our next video, where we'll talk much more about the actual fighting part. See you on the battlefield.